Today I'm hosting a collab for quick weeknight meals. School's back in session. I thought this was a perfect time. So if you're looking for something quick that you can throw together on a weeknight, my pals and I have the perfect solution for you here. This is my delicious chicken cacciatore. So good, very filling and full of flavor. And you'll have dinner on the table within 45 minutes. So if you'd like to see how this is done, stick around because it's coming up next. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Roy. I am a home cook and amateur baker, and I'm here on this channel sharing recipes that have helped me to lose over 125 pounds, whether those recipes are mine or someone else's. Now today is one of my recipes, but it's my version of a classic Italian dish, chicken cacciatore. Now I always used to think that chicken cacciatore was this long process in this complicated dish, but it's really not. So that's why I decided that this would be the perfect meal to be part of my collab that I'm hosting this month for quick weeknight meals. And you couldn't get any quicker. This is done in about half an hour cooking time, a little more for prep, but I'll also tell you how to cut that down a little bit if you really need to. Now, all of the other channels that are gonna be part of this collab for quick weeknight meals are going to be listed down in the description box. So go check out the other channels and you'll have a few extra quick meals on hand whenever you need them. And if you came over from another channel, I would really appreciate if you would consider subscribing to this one and you'll get lots of great recipes that will help you on a weight loss journey. Now, I'm sure you've heard of, even if you've never had chicken cacciatore, and it is a classic dish that's been around forever, as far as I know, and it's actually Italian for hunter's chicken. And supposedly, when there was a hunt, they would come back and they would cook up this dish, although why they were hunting chickens, I don't really know, but that's the story. Now, I didn't do any hunting, but I do have some chicken on hand and I have a lot of other ingredients. So let's go over them now. Here I have one and a half pounds of chicken breast that I have cut up into cubes. That is going to help us to cook this a little more quickly. I have seen it done with cutlets and breasts. I just want it quick and easy. That is going to help us by having our chicken cut up. Here I have eight ounces of fusilli pasta. Now that's not in the recipe. That's just what I'm making it with. You can make it with whatever you want. You can do it with rice. You can do it with pasta. You can do it with bread just to soak up all of that delicious sauce. It's your call, but I am doing it with pasta but that is not going to be included in the bites, points, calories, and macros at the end. Here I have a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. This is obviously a tomato-based sauce, so that's what I am using. Here I have three quarters of a cup of chicken broth. Now, in a lot of these recipes, it calls for wine, but I'm not looking to add any bites, points, or calories that I don't need to, so I'm going with the chicken broth just to cut down the bites and points that I will be getting. Here I have eight ounces of sliced mushrooms. I just bought the pre-sliced ones and rinsed them off, but if you want to slice them yourself, that's fine. But if you wanted to make this a little quicker and less prep time, you could use eight ounces of canned mushrooms and also you can use some frozen peppers and onions, which I'll be going over in a minute, but that'll just make it a little quicker if you wanna do it that way. But I really like the earthy flavor that fresh mushrooms give this dish. Here I have one third cup of quartered olives. I'm using Kalamata olives. You could use green olives. And what I did was just cut them in half lengthwise and half the widthwise 
but however you feel like cutting them up is fine. I just wanted them to distribute more evenly through the dish. Here I have one medium onion that has been diced. And if you wanted to use frozen for this, you would use about a cup, but you could adjust that up or down depending on your preference. Here I have one medium red pepper and I have cut those into thin strips, but then cut those strips into thirds so that you get a shorter strip. I don't want long strips of pepper in this. I just want little bits that I can eat easily, not like long pieces. So I strip and then cut them into thirds, but you can dice them if you want. Or as I said, you could use frozen. I would use about a cup of frozen peppers as well. Here I have my cooking spray, of course. And surprisingly enough, I have here two teaspoons of olive oil. Yes, I'm actually using some olive oil in this. You could eliminate it, but it doesn't really affect the bites or points too much. So I'm going to use a little bit just to get that flavor and enhance the browning that I'm gonna get on the chicken and the vegetables. Here I have one and a half teaspoons of balsamic vinegar, one tablespoon of minced garlic. Now, if you wanted to do that yourself, mince them yourself, a teaspoon is about one clove. So three cloves would equal about a tablespoon. Here I have one teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of Italian seasoning, and one half teaspoon of black pepper. So those are all of the ingredients. So let me shuffle a few things around and I'll show you how quickly this comes together. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is season the chicken. I'm just going to take that teaspoon of salt and sprinkle that all over, then the pepper. And you don't have to worry about being too precise at this point, just because we are going to toss it. But if you wanted to combine the salt and pepper together before sprinkling that on, that would be fine as well. But I'm just going to toss that around to evenly distribute the seasoning that we have on there. Okay, so then I'm going to bring my pan in. I'm using, you can use like a Dutch oven or some sort of heavy bottomed pot. You don't necessarily want to use a skillet because this will fill up quite a bit. So unless you have a really big skillet, I would prefer doing it in a Dutch oven or a pot like this. What I'm going to do first, I have it over medium high and I'm just going to spray it with some cooking spray because I don't want to rely too much on the oil for anything more than flavor. So I'm going to add in the teaspoon of oil as well. Now I'm just going to heat this up until it's hot. Usually you can tell if it's hot enough if you have your hand about a two inches above and you can feel the heat on your hand. That's usually when it's hot enough. But Give me a second. Okay, that feels hot enough to me. What I'm gonna do is add in the chicken. And that's what you wanna hear. That's what they call the applause. You wanna hear some applause when you put your meat in there. That way you know it's hot enough. So get that in there and get that spread out into an even layer. So now what I'm gonna do is let this sit untouched for two to three minutes to get some color on that side. And then we'll move on. Okay, so it's been about three minutes. I'm just going to flip this and you can see it's getting some nice color on the chicken there from just sitting at the bottom of the pan. The other thing it's doing, because I'm not using non-stick, is if you can see down here, there are little bits adhering to the pan and that is called fond. That's a lot of flavor in that and we're gonna be using that shortly but we just wanna flip this chicken over to get the uncooked side down. And now we're just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna let that sit there untouched for two more minutes. Okay, so it's been two minutes. Just gonna stir that through. Now it's not gonna be fully cooked just yet. You don't need it to be because we are gonna be adding this in later and cooking it more. We just wanted to get some color in here. So I'm going to transfer it to a plate along with any juices that have accumulated there. And I'm going to return this to the heat. I'm going to give it another spray of cooking spray and add in our last teaspoon of olive oil. And we're just going to let this heat up for a moment. It won't take too long because the pan is already hot and that feels about right. So I'm going to add in the onion. 
the peppers, and the mushrooms. And if any of these mushrooms are a little big, I usually break them up a little bit, get them to distribute a little more evenly throughout the dish. But you can leave them as is if you want. But see why I wanted a Dutch oven or a stock pot is because it's already fairly full. So I'm just gonna stir that through. And now what we're gonna do is just let this cook down for about four to five minutes to let some of that moisture come out of the mushrooms and to let the peppers and onions soften up a little bit. So four or five minutes and I'll be back. Okay, so it's been about five minutes. What I'm going to do now is add in the garlic and just stir that through. We just want to heat that through until it becomes fragrant and it's only about 30 seconds. You just want to get rid of some of that bitterness that garlic can have. And you can see there is some moisture from the mushrooms down at the bottom that's helped us to glaze the pan, which means you've gotten rid of the fond, the cooked bits that were on the bottom of the pan. When a recipe says to deglaze, that's what they're talking about. They're trying to get all those good tasty bits scraped off the bottom and you usually need a liquid to help. So I'm going to add in the chicken broth and that's going to stop the cooking for the moment until that heats up. It only took a few seconds, 30 seconds say, for it to come up to temperature. So now what we're going to do is add in balsamic vinegar, Italian seasoning, the olives, and our can of tomatoes. And I'm going to stir that all together. And now what we want to do is now bring this up to a simmer. It may take a minute or two longer than when we added the chicken broth just because there's so much more liquid now. So let's get this up to a simmer and we'll move on. Okay, so the sauce is starting to simmer now. It's bubbling a little bit. I'm going to turn it down to medium and I'm going to add in our chicken along with any juices that have accumulated on our plate here. And you want to get that chicken down into the sauce because this is going to help it to finish cooking. And if you were wondering why I didn't add any salt or pepper to the sauce, it's because there was some on the chicken. And we're going to taste it later to see if it needs any more seasoning. So get that chicken all submerged. And now what I'm going to do is partially cover the sauce. You don't want to cover it fully because what's going to happen is it's not going to allow any steam to escape. It's actually going to create more moisture in the lid and make our sauce too thin. But if you kept the lid off completely, then it would get too thick because too much moisture would evaporate. So we're going to partially cover it by just putting it at an angle so that there's a little gap here and under here to let some steam out, but not a lot because we don't want this getting too thick and we don't want it getting too thin. So we're going to let this sit for about 15 to 20 minutes, let that thicken up and let that chicken cook through. So 15, 20 minutes and we're ready to serve. All right, so it's been about 18 minutes. I'm going to turn this off and I did stir it a few times just to make sure that nothing was sitting on the bottom for too long. And then I would submerge the chicken back down into the sauce. There you have it. I've tasted it. Does not need any more salt or pepper. It's perfect just as it is. But look at how nice and thick that is. Look at all of those ingredients, the chicken, the mushrooms, the onions, the peppers, and the olives. This is gonna be so good. I cannot wait. But that's all there is to it. That's all there is to making chicken cacciatore pretty quick for a weeknight meal. It took me maybe about 40 minutes just because I was also recording at the same time. So that slowed me down a little bit. Within 40 minutes, you can have dinner on the table and it smells amazing. Now again, this was part of a collab for quick weeknight meals. So check out the other channels that are doing this collab with me down in the description box and you'll have all sorts of meals ready at a moment's notice. But now I know you want to know all of those nutrition facts. For those of you who don't know, who are new here, I am on the Healthy Better Balance Plan, which is equivalent to the old WW Blue Plan, which is about where their current plan lies. There may be an item or two that's a little different than it used to be on the Blue Plan, 
but it shouldn't be too big of a difference. But for one serving, and as I said, this does serve six, it's only going to be one better balanced bite or old blue point. And if you are following calories, the calories for one serving is going to be 313. And if you were following macros, the fat would be 10.3 grams. Saturated fat would be 1.9 grams. Protein would be 22 grams. Carbs would be 38.8 grams. And that is just for the chicken cacciatore, not for the pasta. Fiber is 5.1 grams. And sugars are 5.8 grams for one sixth of this pot of chicken cacciatore. And as I said, you can serve it with whatever you want. You can serve it with pasta, with rice, with veggie pasta. You can serve it with cauliflower rice. You can have it with whatever you'd like. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate you doing the usual, like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that notification bell for the next time I upload any sort of video. We do have in October, I will be hosting another collab that I've left pretty open-ended and just calling it Fall Flavors. So it could be anything from desserts to main dishes, anything from apple, maple, pumpkin, who knows? But that collab will be coming up on the third Sunday of October. So hit that notification bell and you'll be alerted whenever any of my videos pop up. Also, I'd like to mention that there is a new feature under this video. You will see now a banner for the Recipes with Roy Gear store. So if you wanna buy some merchandise and help support the channel, I would really appreciate that. It's right down here. Also down there, I will have a link directly to this recipe as well as to my blog itself if you're looking for any of my recipes. And if you're new here, I do have quite a few of them. Also down there, you will find my Amazon storefront if I've used anything in the kitchen, food-wise, what have you, that you are looking for, it might be there. Also down there is my Built Bar Rewards, Fetch Rewards, and my social media. I have my Instagram and three Facebook groups that I'm part of. So check out that description box for all sorts of information. And now I think it is time for us to go and have a very hearty meal and very tasty too. And I hope you'll be doing the same yourself very soon. So until next time, bye. Yeah.